Hi friends, welcome to Biology Tutor. I am Dr. Vimal. Today we are going to discuss about food fortification. If you like this channel, please share and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell button to get notifications. Food fortification. Food fortification or enrichment. It is the process of adding micronutrients to food. What is the difference between food fortification and enrichment? In food fortification, nutrients that don't naturally occur in the food are added to them. World Health Organization and Food and Agricultural Organization define fortification as the practice of deliberately increasing the content of an essential micronutrient that is vitamins and minerals including trace elements in a food so as to improve the nutritional quality of the food supply and to provide a public health benefit with minimal risk to health. What is enrichment? It is the addition of micronutrients to a food which are lost during processing that is enrichment. Next, Food Fortification Resources Center FERC Set up by Food Safety and Standards Authority of India with support from Tata Trust. It is a resource and support center to promote large scale fortification of food across India. Food fortification is a scientifically proven, cost effective, scalable and sustainable global intervention that addresses the issue of micronutrient deficiencies for fortified foods plus F logo is used. In October 2016, FSSAI operationalized the fortification of following foods, wheat flour and rice with iron, vitamin B12 and folic acid, milk and edible oil with vitamin A and D double fortified salt with iodine and iron. International context. We are going to discuss about the international scenario. Two global trade agreements are relevant to food, both of which are administered by the World Trade Organization. They are SPS agreement that means sanitary and phytosanitary. TBT agreement, technical barriers to trade. Food fortification measures, whether mandatory or voluntary, are covered by the important TBT agreement. TBT means Technical Barriers to Trade Agreement. Need for fortification of food. Deficiency of micronutrients or micronutrient malnutrition, that means MNM, also known as hidden hunger, which is known as hidden hunger, micronutrients or micronutrient malnutrition is known as hidden hunger. It is the serious health risk in India. India has a very high burden of micronutrient deficiencies caused by vitamin A, iodine, iron and folic acid. It leads to night blindness or nyctalopia, goiter, anemia and various birth defects. The fortification is needed in order to decrease the incidence of nutrient deficiencies. This is a chart of vitamins, minerals and their functions and their deficiency due to that particular vitamin and minerals. Just look into this chart. Benefits of fortification Nutrients are added to staple foods since they are widely consumed. Thus it improves the health of large section of population all at once. That is the first point of fortification. The second one, it is a safe method of improving nutrition among people. The quantity added is small and well under the recommended daily allowances. So it does not pose a health risk to people. It is a cost-effective intervention and does not require any changes in eating patterns or food habits of people. It is a socio-culturally 
acceptable way to deliver nutrients to people it does not alter the characteristics of the food like the taste aroma or the text of the food that is all about the benefits of nutrition next the types of fortification mass fortification or universal fortification to fortify foods that are widely consumed by the general population that method is known as mass fortification example flour fortification with iron folic acid and iodized salt next one is targeted fortification to fortify foods designed for specific population subgroups hmm? specific population subgroups such as complementary foods for young children or rations for displaced populations that is a targeted fortification targeting people with vitamin a deficiency and iron deficiency anemia that is an example for targeted fortification next third one market driven or industry driven or open market free market fortification it allow food manufacturers to voluntarily fortified foods available in the marketplace example chocolate drink powder breakfast cereals etc next the fortification can also be divided into mandatory or voluntary mass fortification is mandatory one but the targeted fortification can either be mandatory or voluntary market driven fortification is always voluntary the other types of fortification household and community fortification adding micronutrients to foods at the household level example vitamin d drops bio fortification of staple foods it is a breeding and genetic modification of plants so as to improve their nutrient content and absorption examples for bio fortification golden rice genetically engineered to produce beta carotene or pro vitamin a to fight against vitamin a deficiency which causes nyctelopia or night blindness quality protein maize qpm variety of contains nearly twice as much lysine and tryptophan lysine and tryptophan it is produced by conventional plant breeding selenium rich wheat and selenium rich tomatoes generally produced by application of selenium fertilizers what is fortificant the micronutrient added to the food that is known as fortificant the fortificants that are used are of plant origin in particular for vitamin d the regulations clearly mentions that the source nutrient as only from plant source food vehicle the food to which the fortification is added is known as food vehicle right side you can see a chart vehicle and micronutrients whole wheat flour and maida iron folic acid calcium zinc rice icds supplementary foods common salt milk and dairy products sugar and vegetable oil right side you can see micronutrients added to that particular food vehicles food fortification in india you have to know the food fortification history of india the history of food fortification in india dates back to 1953 when the fortification of vanaspati with vitamin a became a mandate iodized salt was mandated in 1962 it was a part of national goiter control program ngcp 1962 the government of india has recommended fortification in each of the 10th 11th and 12th five year plans initiatives such as icds that means integrated child development services mid day meals and public distribution system are aimed at those at the highest risk for malnutrition preschoolers pregnant and lactating women school children and poor and underserved sections of the population national nutrition mission an initiative of niti ayog launch kuposhan mukt bharat it is very very important kuposhan mukt bharat what is kuposhan mukt bharat 
National Nutrition Mission and Initiative of Nidhi Aayog launched the Portion Mukt Bharat for what purpose? To combat the malnutrition launched in September 2017, Malnutrition Free India by 2030, using food fortification as an intervention to curb micronutrient deficiencies. That is the peculiarity of Portion Mukt Bharat. Mandatory food fortification in India exists for following foods salt, milk, edible oil, rice, and wheat flour. Next, double fortified salt. What is double fortified salt? It addresses the issue of iron deficiency anemia and iron deficiency disorders. India's National Institute of Nutrition has pioneered the development of double fortified salt iodine potassium iodate manufacture level 20 to 30 ppm distribution channel including retail level of 15 to 30 ppm iron content ferrous sulfate or ferrous fumarate 850 to 1100 ppm that is all about double fortified salt or dfs next one is milk Milk is fortified with vitamin A and vitamin D. Vitamin A Retinyl acetate or retinyl palmitate 270 to 450 microgram retinyl equivalent per liter of milk. Vitamin D Vitamin D2 ergo calciferol or D3 called calciferol 5 to 7.5 microgram per liter of milk. Edible oil since vitamin A and D are fat soluble vitamins, fortification of edible oils and fats with vitamin A and D is a good strategy to address micronutrient malnutrition. Vitamin A, retinyl acetate or retinyl palmitate, 6 to 9.9 microgram RE per gram of oil. Vitamin D, vitamin D to ergo calciferol, D3 core calciferol usually 0.11 to 0.16 microgram per gram of oil is used next this is the fortification chart of rice next the fortification chart of wheat next fortifications iron iodine vitamin a b c d e and other compounds are used as fortifications iron cereals are most widely used vehicles for iron fortification Others vehicles are such as milk products, sugar, curry powder, soya sauce and cookies have been successfully used. Elemental iron, particularly micronized iron sulfate and iron fumarate are preferred iron fortificants. The presence of phytates, polyphenols, calcium can adversely affect the bioavailability of non-heme iron fortificants. To prevent this, sodium iron EDTA can be used. It is better fortification and is approved by JECFA. Thalassemia patients or people on low iron diets should not consume foods fortified with iron. Accordingly, Food Safety and Standards Fortification of Foods Regulation in 2018 distinctly mentions that the package of food fortified with iron that is wheat flour, maida, rice and double fortified salt shall carry a mandatory declaration. People with thalassemia may take under medical supervision with iodine. Salt is one of the most suitable vehicles for iodine fortification. Two chemical forms of iodine are currently used for iodization. These are iodides and iodides. The level of fortification recommended by CAC is in the range of 30 to 200 ppm. The iodides are more readily degraded in the presence of impurities, whereas the iodides remain stable in salt of lower quality, hence preferred. Other vehicles used for iodization are milk, bread, flour, sugar and condiments. 
Fortification of animal feeds can be useful in increasing the iodine content of animal products. Next, vitamin A. Foods which have been successfully fortified with vitamin A include margarine, fats and oils, milk, sugar, cereals and instant noodles with spice mix. In developed countries, vitamin A fortification is limited to milk and dairy products. In developed countries, vitamin A fortification is limited to milk and dairy products, margarine, fat spreads and breakfast cereals. Vitamin D. The vehicles include margarine, vegetable oils and dairy products. Vitamin D metabolism is linked to calcium absorption and parathyroid hormone vitamin e the vehicles are fats and oils including margarine fat spreads and breakfast cereals it is added as tocopherol acetate vitamin e intake is related to the total dietary intake of fat and it enhances absorption and bioconversion of dietary carotenoids to vitamin A. Vitamin C. Vitamin C fortification is done in fruit juices, fruit juice drinks, other related beverages, dairy products and some breakfast cereals. Vitamin C improve iron bioavailability. Vitamin B complex. B vitamins are added to cereal and grains. The development of all flavors due to the thermal instability of thiamine is easily circumvented by adding this vitamin B following all heat treatments. Other fortifications Calcium in fruit juice, carbonated beverages and rice. Fluoride Water and toothpaste In adults 10 mg per day and in infants 0.7 mg per day is needed. Niacin is added into bread. Thank you. If you like this channel, please share and subscribe. Don't forget to click bell buttons to get notifications.